Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, somebody sent me to uh, sent me to this video. I'm pretty sure that's how I got here. <laughs> uh, I never know anymore. No, sometimes I just fall fall into them. You know, you see them on the side, and oh, that looks interesting, and you click on it. But I'm pretty sure this is from my email. All right, this is from the Haynes Ministry. Uh. Yeah, Haynes Ministry, and it's uh, put up December 10th, and it's called December's Full Cold Moon and Conjunction, Rapture Countdown. Well, I had been telling people that somewhere on 12-12, it's going to be an eclipse at 12-12. Okay, but now let me read to you what, what they're saying, and this is probably correct, or they wouldn't have put it up. I... I don't think so um, let me let me just read I'm gonna see they they don't talk their face is not on here they just make posters somehow and or probably in their computer and just show the words okay and I have the music cut off okay so I'm just gonna read the words up to a point okay for a couple of minutes, all credit for this is goes to the Haynes Ministry. Okay, it's not my work. All right. Now, the word for the day is, Son, go get my children. Just in a few... Now, stop. I don't know if that means that every day they hear from the Lord or... I mean, the word for the day is, son, go get my children. They should have made that clear. I'd, I mean, Let's see if it's in the description box. December 12th will be our final full moon. Uh, no, they, they, they don't. Okay, no, it doesn't say that they got that from the Lord, so I can't comment to that any further. This says, just in a few days, we will have our last full moon of the year. It will also be the last full moon for this decade. The nickname for December's full moon is the Full Cold Moon. It's called the cold moon because winter has arrived in the northern hemisphere. It's also nicknamed the full long night's moon. During the winter months, the moon is above the horizon longer because the nights are longer. If you are on eastern time in the USA... The full moon will reach its peak on 1212 at 1212 a.m. That's Eastern Time in the USA. So that would be anybody in below us and above us that would follow Eastern Time. Okay. For 2019, a rare full cold moon kiss will happen. Saturn and Venus will coincide with the last full moon of the year, causing a planetary, quote, kiss between the two planets. Venus and Saturn will appear closer than usual in the night sky. Venus and Saturn. The celestial bodies will be less than two degrees. I guess that's what it means. There's two and a, and a... I wonder how they made that. My computer, I can't figure out how to make a little degrees mark. I just have to spell it out. Anyway, the celestial bodies will be less than two degrees. It's got a little circle. What else could that mean? apart 
and share a celestial longitude. I don't know what else that would mean. A phenomena known as a conjunction or planetary kiss. The moon is symbolic of the church. Having no source of light itself, the moon fully reflects the light of the sun. Interesting. As the church reflects the light of the Son of God. The full moon in all of its glory reflects the most light in the evening sky when surrounded by darkness. Isn't that interesting? We as believers do the same thing. We are the light of the world, reflecting the light of our God. In the midst of this darkened and dying world, would or could the rapture happen during a full moon? And I'm going to stop it there. And, um... It seems like I remember seeing something about the full moon. Let me just Google it and see if that will pull up what I was trying to think of the words for the scripture that says something about the full moon. Let me let me try um what does the full moon represent in scripture or in the Bible that's close enough symbolically it represents darkness and Satan a full moon would represent darkness and Satan it also represents our spiritual mother oh brother well, Quora.com, this is obviously not a Christian site because that's not at all what I was thinking about it. All right, this, what does a full moon represent spiritually? Uh, spiritually can be, now here's one. Is there any significance to a full moon in the Bible? Oh, this has got questions. Okay, I'm going to click on this. Because they're, uh, I've been there before and they've, I think they're a pretty good site. Alright, let's see what they have to say. Is there any significance to a full moon in the Bible? Answer. The moon is one of the great lights that God made on the fourth day of creation. That's in Genesis 1 verses 14 through 18. These great lights were to help mankind mark the passing of time and the rotation of the earth. Oh, brother. Okay, whatever. Moving on. Ancient cultures based their seasons and even celebrations. See, I believe that they, the sun and the moon rotate over us like a mobile over a baby's crib. But anyway, that's my opinion. That's how I see things. All right. Ancient cultures based their seasons and even celebrations upon the moon's phases. We've heard much lately about blood moons as a sign that Jesus' return is imminent. But does a full moon have any biblical significance? Full moons are mentioned in a few places in scripture, but not in ways that mark any particular significance. New moons marked the beginning of months in the lunar-based Hebrew calendar 
and also signified when Israelites were to bring sacrifices to the Lord. And that's Numbers 10, verse 10, and Numbers 28, verse 11. Also Psalm 81, verse 3 alludes to feasts of celebration held, quote, when the moon is full, unquote. The prophet Joel foretold that the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Okay, the day of the first rapture is not the day of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That will be after the sixth seal is opened. Okay? See, it says Revelation 6, 12. That's one of his references. And also Joel 31. I mean, Joel 2, verse 31. Isaiah 30, verse 26, speaks of an unnaturally bright moon that will play a part when the day of the Lord comes. Ooh, let's look at that. Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day when the Lord binds up the brokenness of his people and heals the wounds inflicted by his blow. Now see, if it's in Isaiah, that makes me wonder, binds up the brokenness of his people and heals the wounds inflicted by his blow. It could be, but I'm not sure, to be honest, if that means the day of the first rapture, or is that talking about when he comes back riding on a horse with saints behind him at the end of the seven years, okay? To rescue the the Jews that have been hiding out. You know what I'm saying? Because they will go through the tribulation. Unless, of course, they accept Jesus before. And they make it in a second rapture or get caught and accept Jesus and get beheaded. That's That could happen. But the majority of them will be hidden out and protected. Um, okay, a naturally bright light. So human beings have a tendency to worship anything that seems greater than we are. And moon worship or moon goddess worship has been a historical problem. God warned us about this in Deuteronomy 4.19. When you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them. For heaven's sakes, some cultures have attributed divine qualities to the sun and moon and built altars to them and worshipped them. Yeah, we know. Islam, that's their, that's their sign. They have a the crescent moon and a star on top of all their mosques and on their ambulances and on their everything. That's their, um, what's the word? It's not motto because that's a saying. Anyway, that's their picture, whatever it's called. But the moon is a creation of God just as the earth is, and is not worthy of worship or praise. And when we turn our focus from the Creator to the creation, we are guilty, whoops, of idolatry. What happened? So many ads. I just clicked on the page and an ad was popping up. Okay, that's in Romans 1.25 about being guilty of idolatry. 
Okay, but I'm looking for something in particular here. An important spiritual truth we can learn from the full moon is that as bright and beautiful as a full moon appears, it has no brilliance of its own. It relies entirely upon the sun for its light. Without the sun, the moon is merely a hunk of dark rock. Likewise, we human beings have no light of our own. We were created in the image of God to reflect his brilliance and glory. And when we are turned, and that's Genesis 1.27, when we are turned to face the majesty of Almighty God, when we surrender to him and seek him with all our hearts, we reflect his glory. That's Matthew 5, 14. It says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's ESV Bible version. We were created to be reflectors of his light in this world. John 1, 4-5 which says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's right. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm not sure where that is. Probably near that one. When we shine in the glory of God, we are not to be worshipped, as the moon is not to be worshipped. We are to point people to Jesus by committing ourselves to reflect his light. John 8, 12. And it says, again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Yeah, that kind of confused me. Or earlier it said, you are the light of the world. But we are, because we're reflecting his light. Anyway, Jesus is telling them, when he, he was here, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Okay. Now, I will link that. I will put the... Uh, it's not saying what... Oh, I have to do more research and do a follow-up. Because I am sure I have seen it say something about it being tied to... I guess it was to the holidays, their holidays, their feast days, whatever. Anyway, I, I got to look it up. I can't remember it. All right. I thought I could find it real quick, but I didn't. Okay, so I'm going to end this here. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, my computer, and each and every one of you, your devices, and all of your internet connections as well. And I pray that we get to stay on here and stay in touch for as long as we're here. Maybe we go to 12th. Maybe we don't. Sister Pearl Clary has got more revelations she's sharing. And she's talking like it could be by this weekend in one video and then in another before that. It was the 31st. It could be the 26th or the 31st based on that video, I Pet Goat 2. But, um, so we've got lots of days to look forward to in December. We know we're in the season, okay? So if we don't get to go to 12th, you just keep hanging in there because... We know he's coming. We know he is. So don't get discouraged. As bad as we want to go and be with him. And I just, I want to hug him so much, you know. And gaze into his beautiful eyes and just 
worship him in person. You know, like, you know. Anyway, I'll end it here and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.